So, I mean, I, I have kids. I have to think about their future, and, and I, we have to think about everybody's future. If we continue in the same manner as we're doing now, we won't get there. We need to change. Each and every one needs to change and do our best in this concerted effort to save our planet. Our relationship with carbon is complicated. All life on our planet is carbon-based. We are carbon-based and we're surrounded by carbon. From limestone cliffs and mountains to the forests and grasslands to the very air we breathe. And for the last 12,000 years, the balance of carbon in the atmosphere has allowed humanity to evolve and thrive. But that delicate balance has now been shattered by the enormous amounts of fossil fuel emissions we're putting into the atmosphere. Fossil fuels have been the driving force behind industrial development and human expansion. And feeding that expansion is the construction industry, responsible for an estimated 37% of global greenhouse gas emissions. What if buildings could be, rather than an existential threat, a true solution to climate change? What if buildings on balance could actually store more carbon on balance in their construction than is emitted during, their, during the whole process of construction? Cement and the concrete it forms is the most abundant human-made material on the planet. And it's here that scientists and innovators are working on ways to reduce the carbon footprint of building materials by supplementing them with materials that can capture and bind CO2 to make them carbon neutral and even carbon negative. I believe if humans are like working towards this goal and there's like not just one group of people doing it but multiple groups of people doing it and more and more people are joining this, there's going to be a change for sure. Climate restoration is the evolving science of carbon dioxide and methane removal to return our climate to how it was over 100 years ago. The Climate Restorers travels the world exploring ways that scientists and innovators are developing to remove, store and, in some cases, use carbon dioxide in the construction industry. Everybody has such a short attention span that it's hard to kind of um, pull people in. But when you have a technology like ourselves or other technologies, carbon sequestering technologies, it's really exciting because, uh, again, you can show people that there's a tangible solution. Fast-growing carbon-capturing organic materials such as hemp and algae are being harvested and also used in construction to create carbon-neutral and negative building materials. In Seattle, Washington, a major renovation is being used as a construction lab to showcase a range of carbon-neutral and negative materials. Geothermal energy is being used to power a carbon capture plant in Iceland where they're collecting and removing CO2 from the air and storing it deep underground. As we move towards a world of electric vehicles and off-grid power storage, waste rock from the mining metals needed to power these batteries can be used to capture gigatons of CO2. A company in Canada that has developed a way to absorb CO2 using the waste rock and a process known as mineralization. It's easy to place blame generationally on this generation doesn't believe in climate change or this generation is more susceptible to climate change. I think if we're going to make progress, we have to make progress together. We all have to be rowing in the same boat. The people, the places, the issues and opportunities and the science of saving our climate. Our relationship with carbon may be complicated, but the choices we have to make to save our climate are simple. The Climate Restorers cuts through the science and terminology to bring you the news on where we are, where we need to be, and how we might get there. <laughs>